You have learned to solve systems of equations that contain two equations and two variables. In this lesson, we're going to look at systems of equations that contain three variables and three equations. Now, when you had a system of two equations in two variables, your solution was an ordered pair x, y. You'll find that with three variables, we will have solutions that will be in the form of what we call ordered triples x, y, z, or whatever the three variables might be that we're using in these equations. Many of the steps that you used for solving a system of two equations will also apply when you solve a system of three equations. Let's take a look at the steps that we will kind of follow when we solve a system containing more than two equations. Solving linear systems in three variables. The first step is that we will use two of the equations and eliminate one of the variables from those two equations. We will do that process just like we did when we had two equations before. We will get opposites in front of that particular variable. Then secondly, notice we will use a different pair of equations than those we used in step one, but we will eliminate the same variable that we did in step one what will result is that we will have two new equations that will have the same two variables. So if you notice step three, we're going to solve this resulting system of two equations in the same two variables, and we can solve that system by any of the methods that we have learned previously. And then fourth, we will substitute the solution for the two variables that we obtain in step three into one of the original equations and we will find the value of the third variable. And then, of course, it's always a good idea to check the solution. When we check that solution, we check it in all of the original equations. Remember, to have a solution to the system, our solution must check in every equation of the original system. Now, let's take a look at an example to see how we'll follow these steps. We're to solve the system 2x minus y plus 4z equals 17, 3x plus 4y minus z equals negative 1, and 4x plus 3y plus 2z equals 11. In order to solve this equation, we need to find a value for x, for y, and for z so that when we substitute those values into these original equations, all three equations make a true statement. So let's recall that our first step was to choose two of these equations and eliminate one of the variables. So in order to do that, you might want to look and see what might be easy to use to eliminate one of the variables. Just looking at the coefficients, I notice, for instance, right here I have a negative 1y, and here I have a positive 4y. If I choose these two equations, I could easily eliminate the y variable by simply multiplying this first equation by 4. That would produce opposites in front of this equation here. So let's do that. Let's choose these first two equations right here. We are going to multiply this first equation by 4 as we bring it down and rewrite it. So 4 times 2x is 8x, 4 times negative y is negative 4y, 4 times a 4z is a positive 16z equals 4 times 17. Well, let's see, 4 times 7 is 28, we're carrying 2, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2 is 68. Now, I'm just going to simply bring down this second equation because it already has a positive 4 in front of that y. So, I will bring down 3x plus 4y minus z is equal to negative 1. When I add these two equations, notice that my y variable will be eliminated because I have opposites here. So, let's add 8x plus 3x is 11x, my y's are eliminated, a positive 16z minus 1z is a positive 15z, 
and this will equal 67. Now, my second step is to choose a different pair. That means I may use the first equation and the last equation, or the second equation with the last equation. I just cannot reuse the first two equations. But again, remember, I want to eliminate the same variable y. So I might want to look carefully here to see what might be easier. If I choose these second two equations, I'm going to need to make 12 and negative 12 occur in front of my y values. That might give me some rather large numbers. But notice if I choose the first equation and the last equation, again, I can eliminate y very easily by simply multiplying this first equation by 3. So on my second step, my different pair will be the first one and the last one, and I'm going to multiply this first equation by 3 as I rewrite it. So multiplying by 3, 3 times 2x is 6x, 3 times negative y is a negative 3y, 3 times a positive 4z is a positive 12z equals 3 times 17. Well, let's see, 3 times 7 is 21, I'm carrying 2, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. And then again, I'm just going to recopy this third equation down here, 4x plus 3y plus 2z is equal 11. And let's add these equations together. 6x plus 4x is 10x. Notice my y variable is eliminated again, which is what I wanted to happen. And then 12z plus 2z is a plus 14z. And adding over here, I get what, 62. Notice what I have here are two equations that have the very same two variables. And so that will allow me to work as I've done before. Now, looking at these two equations, if I'm going to solve these by, say, elimination, then I need to get opposites in front of either the x or the z. Just looking at the numbers, I think I might rather go for opposites in front of x. Uh, in order to do that, I might multiply this first equation by 10, and then I could multiply this equation by negative 11. Multiplying by 10 will be real easy. So let's take this equation we are going to multiply by 10. So 10 times 11x is 110x, plus 10 times 15z is 150z, and 10 times 67 is 670. So now in order to make this coefficient be the opposite, I will need to multiply this equation by negative 11. Of course, 10 times negative 11 is negative 110x, which is what I want to happen. Now, I need to multiply this 14 times negative 11. To save us some room, let me scoot down. We're going to take 14 up here and multiply by negative 11. So 1 times 4 is 4, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 1 is 1. Can you see if I add, I have a 4? a 5 and a 1, and my solution will be negative. So this is going to be negative 154z. And then I need to multiply this 62 also times negative 11. Let's take that 62 right here times my negative 11. 1 times 2 and 1 times 6, 1 times 2 and 1 times 6. When I add, I'm going to have a 2, an 8, and a 6. And again, it will be negative, so negative 682. Of course, there's nothing that says you can't use a calculator here sometimes when these numbers get large. Okay, well, let's add these two new equations that I have. Of course, with the opposites here, this variable is eliminated. A positive 150z minus 154z will give me a negative 4z. 670 minus 682 is going to be a negative answer, and when I find the difference here, I'm going to have a negative 12. So dividing both sides by negative 4, 
I solve and I have z is equal to a positive 3. Now recall with two equations, once I have one of the values, I can substitute that value into either of these two equations and solve for the other variable. I think I'm going to take this z to this equation, uh, mainly just because I have enough room here to work that out. Bring down the 10 times x plus 14, and I'm going to replace z with 3, equals 62. Now let's do this multiplication. 10 times x, I'm going to get a positive number. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 plus 1 is 42 here, equals 62. Then we will subtract 42 from both sides. That gives me 10x is equal 20. And dividing by 10, of course, x equals 2. Now that I have two of the values, I have x and z, I'm going to go back to one of these equations and substitute these numbers in to find the other value uh, for y. So let's just go to that first equation. If x is 2, 2 times 2 would be 4. I have a minus y. And then notice plus 4 times z. If z is 3, 4 times 3 would be a plus 12 equals 17. Adding my like terms, I have a negative y plus 16 is equal 17. If I subtract 16 from 17, I get negative y equals a positive 1. And of course, if we multiply both sides by negative 1 here, I get y equals negative 1. You'll notice I now have a value for all three of my variables. So let's write that as an ordered triple, and we'll do that in alphabetical order x, y, z. x was 2, y is negative 1, and z, I'm sorry, I meant to write a z there, z is 3. So my ordered triple is 2, negative 1, 3. Now we can check this answer. Uh, notice if x is 2 here, I get a 4. If y is negative 1 minus a negative 1 is a plus 1. 4 times 3 would be a plus 12. And notice if you add these up, you do get 17, which is what that first equation said. Let's check in the second equation. If x is 2, 3 times 2 is a 6. If y is negative 1, 4 times negative 1 is a negative 4. And if z is 3, minus z would be minus 3. Notice 6 minus 4 is a 2. 2 subtract 3 gives me negative 1. Again, that is the correct solution, isn't it? And then finally, in the third equation, if x is 2, 4 times 2 is 8. If y is negative 1, 3 times negative 1 is a negative 3. And if z is 3, 2 times 3 is a plus 6. And notice again, 8 minus 3 is 5. 5 plus 6 gives me 11, which is the correct solution. So this just verifies that these numbers are solutions for all three of our variables. Now that you've seen this first example, you might notice, first of all, that it's very important that you stay organized and keep track of which equations you use. The other thing is that sometimes these numbers make it large, but you just have to do the arithmetic and follow the procedures that you've learned in the past. A calculator may sometimes be helpful. In the rest of the examples that we do, I'm going to leave the check up to you. But keep in mind that if you do correct arithmetic, your answer here should check. If you're unsure of yourself or you tend to make careless mistakes, you might want to be very sure that you check your solution to make sure that you haven't inadvertently written down a wrong solution. Now, in this second example that we look at, we again have a system of three equations and three variables, but you're going to notice that not every variable is in every equation. Sometimes that is a little confusing for students, but if you'll watch here, you'll find that it needn't be, and that if you just follow your steps, these will also work out very easily. Let's take a look. My first equation is 2x minus y equals 0. My second equation, 3y minus z equals 5. And finally, my third equation is x plus z equals 2. 
you'll notice I have X, Y, and Z. I still have three variables. So I'm going to need an ordered triple X, Y, Z as a solution. But you'll notice in my first equation, the Z is missing, whereas in these other two equations, either the X or the Y is missing. Don't let that bother you. We're going to do the same type of steps that we did previously. For example, uh, I'm going to pick two of the equations and eliminate one of the variables. Well, I notice the second two equations right here, z already has opposite coefficients, doesn't it? So if I take 3y minus z equals 5, and x plus z equals 2, and I add these, what's going to happen to my z? It's going to be eliminated, isn't it? Well, let's notice, of course, these are not like terms. So if I'm going to add 3y and x, I'll have to write those down as separate terms. So I'm going to write x plus 3y, I've added these terms. Adding negative z and plus z, as we said, gets 0z, so that's eliminated equals 5 plus 2 is 7. Now, we are to pick a different pair. That means we're going to need to use this first equation. But I want you to notice something here. That first equation only contains the variables x and y. Notice my new equation down here also only contains x and y. Let's take this first equation with my new equation, that will still be a different pair, won't it? I just don't want to pair this with one of the numbers I, or one of the equations I used before. Okay, let's line these up so we can look at them. I have 2x minus y equals 0, and I have x plus 3y equals 7. I have a new system here that I'm going to work with. How can I eliminate either x or y? Well, I think what I'm going to do is take this first equation and multiply by 3, that will give me a negative 3y. So since I'm not going to have to change this second equation, I'm going to leave it written right there, and I'm going to bring this multiple right down here. 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times negative y is negative 3y. And 3 times 0 is 0. Don't forget to be sure when you're multiplying, you multiply both sides of your equation by this number, otherwise you will not have a true equation. Now if we add these two equations here, x plus 6x is 7x, of course my y's are eliminated, equals 7 plus 0 is 7. Dividing both sides of this equation by 7, I have my first solution x equals 1. Now I can take this solution right back over here. If x is 1, 1 plus 3 times y is equal 7. If I subtract 1, I have 3y is equal 6. And then dividing both sides by 3, I get 1y equals 2. I have a second solution. Now all that's remaining is to find which variable? z. So what I want to do is to pick one of these equations to solve for z. It doesn't matter which one I use. I think I'm going to choose this second equation, x plus z equals 2. I know x is 1, so I have 1 plus z equals 2. If I subtract 1, I have z equals 1. So putting these in order, my x variable is 1, my y variable is 2, and my z variable is 1. So my ordered triple is 1, 2, 1 and you could quickly check those to see that that indeed is a solution for this particular system of equations. Actually, it turned out for this particular system, by having some of those equations not contain all of the variables, we ended up doing a little bit less work than we had to do on that first system. Just don't be confused and be sure that you do a second pair of equations when you start that second step there, that you don't go back and use the same two equations. Let's take a look at another example. I have negative 8x plus 16y minus 4z equals negative 28. 
6x minus 12y plus 3z equals 21, and 2x minus 4y plus z equals 7. Now remember, we're going to pick two of these equations and eliminate one of the variables. What I usually do is try to look for one of the variables that has a coefficient of 1. Notice this z right here has a coefficient of 1. That means it will be easy to use this equation with either of these to eliminate z, won't it? So let's start by taking the first and last equation, and our goal is to eliminate z. So what I'll do, of course, is multiply this third equation down here by 4. That will give me opposites in front of z. I will not need to change this first equation. So let me recopy that first equation. I have negative 8x plus 16y minus 4z equals negative 28. Multiplying this equation by 4, remember 4 times 2x is 8x, 4 times negative 4y is negative 16y, 4 times a positive z is plus 4z, and 4 times 7 is 28. Now, let's add and see what happens here. Well, negative 8x plus 8x is 0x. Positive 16y minus 16y is 0y. Negative 4z plus 4z is 0z. I have a 0 on the left-hand side of this equation. Negative 28 plus 28 also gives me 0, doesn't it? Well, what's happening here is that I have a dependent system. Do you recall what we mean by a dependent system? A dependent system is one where we have infinitely many solutions. Recall that any time we are doing this algebraic process, if we eliminate all of the variables and our resulting statement that involves only numbers is a true statement, which this one is, that is indicating a dependent system. Recall also, however, if all of the variables are eliminated and this resulting statement involving constants is not true, then we have no solution. So we'll want to watch for that also. Now, in this particular assignment, we're only going to note that this is a dependent system. In a previous lesson, we did show you how to write all of these infinitely many solutions using our set notation. And you will learn how to do that in college algebra when you have a system that looks something like this. For now, we simply want you to learn this technique of solving a system of three equations and three variables and learn to recognize when you do have a dependent system. Okay, well let's take a look at another example. I'm to solve negative x minus 4y plus 2z equals negative 8, 2x plus 8y minus 4z equals 9, and x plus 4y minus 2z is equal 3. Now again, I'm kind of wanting to look to see if any of these variables have a coefficient of either 1 or negative 1, because that makes it easy to eliminate variables, doesn't it? Well, notice I do have here and here both coefficients of either 1 or negative 1. So that will make these easy to work with. Let's use the first two equations here. And to eliminate x, I will simply need to multiply this first equation by 2. That will give me a negative 2x and a positive 2x, won't it? So let's multiply this first equation by 2. 2 times negative x is a negative 2x. 2 times negative 4y is a negative 8y. And 2 times 2z is 4z. And then on the other side, 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. Be sure that you multiply both sides of your equation by that 2, otherwise your new equation will not be correct. 
let's just recopy this second equation. I have 2x plus 8y minus 4z equals 9. Let's add. Negative 2x plus 2x is 0x. Negative 8y plus 8y is 0y. And 4z minus 4z is negative, or I'm sorry, is 0z. So I have a 0 over here. Negative 16 plus 9 is negative 7. Notice my variables have disappeared. All of them have, haven't they? My resulting statement involving only numbers is not a true statement. This is false. Whenever that occurs, we have no solution to this system. And remember, if you have no solution, this is referred to as what? Inconsistent system. On these last two examples, it became obvious really on that first step that we were going through that we had either a dependent system or an inconsistent system. That is not always the case. Sometimes you get through that first step where you end up with two new equations containing only the two variables, but when you start working that new system in only two variables, at that point you get either a zero equals zero or a statement like this zero equals negative seven. So anywhere within this process of solving if we get to one of those types of statements, then we can stop at that point and know what is happening in terms of our solutions. I would like for us to do one other example just to be sure that we have this technique down. Let's take a look. We're to solve negative 3x plus 4y plus 2z equals 10, 5x minus 2y plus 3z equals 15, and 3x minus 3y plus 2z equals 10. Now in this particular system you'll notice that none of my variables has a coefficient of either 1 or negative 1. So it may be just a little bit harder to eliminate one of these variables. Uh, but it shouldn't be too difficult. So let's take a look and see what might be something fairly easy that we could accomplish here. Uh, just looking, I notice uh, that this first equation and this last equation here already has opposite coefficients, doesn't it? So if we take those equations just exactly like they are, negative 3x plus 4y plus 2z equals 10, and 3x minus 3y plus 2z equals 10, and add, we will already eliminate x, won't we? So 4y minus 3y is a 1y, 2z plus 2z is 4z, and 10 plus 10 is 20. Now that we have eliminated x using the first and last equation, I now need to go back and eliminate x again using a different pair. Well, it's not going to really matter a whole lot but I think I'm going to use the second equation with the first equation to eliminate x simply because I see the opposites already in front of x and we'll just need to get the appropriate number. So what number do we need to get here? We need to get 15, don't we? The common multiple of 5 and 3. So I will need to multiply this first equation by 5 and let's do that and bring that down. 5 times negative 3x is negative 15x 5 times 4y is a positive 20y. 5 times 2z is a positive 10z. And 5 times 10 is 50. And then, as we bring this down, we're going to need to multiply this one by 3 in order to get a positive 15x. So 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times negative 2y is a negative 6y. 3 times 3z is a positive 9z, and 3 times 15 is 45. Now, let's add. We will eliminate our x's. 20y minus 6y is 14y. 
10z plus 9z is 19z. And adding these, we have, what, 95. Okay, now notice I have two new equations that contain only y and z, which is what I wanted to accomplish. Now, I want to point out here something that is sometimes a common error for students. Sometimes students would add these first two equations to eliminate x, and then for some reason, because they see these z's here, they might decide to next eliminate the z's. But what happens when they do that is they get two equations that do not contain the same two variables. I want to point out one more time on these steps. On this second step, we use a different pair of equations, but it's very important that we eliminate the same variable. So since we chose to eliminate the variable x on this first step, we must also eliminate the variable x on that second step. Otherwise, we have not helped any in terms of finding the solution. Okay, now we're going to work with these two equations and eliminate either the y or the z. Well, what I'm thinking is it might be easier, since there's a 1y here, to eliminate y. If I take this equation and multiply by negative 14, that will give me a negative 14y to be opposites with this one. So negative 14 times y, we're going to go ahead and write that down over here, is negative 14y. I need to multiply 4 times negative 14. That's going to be a negative number. 4 times 4 is 16. I'm carrying 1, so 4 plus 1 is a 5. So I have negative 56z here. And negative 14 times 20, if you want to do that multiplication, is negative 280. Okay, my y's, when I add here, are going to be eliminated, aren't they? And so let's see, I have a positive 19 minus 56z. That answer is going to be negative, isn't it? And recall we have to find the difference. 9 from 16 will give me a 7. I had to borrow, so 1 from 4 is 3. I have a negative 37z here. Okay, these also have opposite signs, and my larger number is negative, so let's put a negative there, and we'll find the difference. 5 from 10 gives me a 5. And let's see, I had to borrow. So 9 from 17 gives me an 8, and I have a 1 here. So negative 37z is equal negative 185. We need to divide both sides by negative 37, don't we? That will give me a positive 1z. Now I know a negative divided by a negative is going to be positive. And we can divide 37 into our 185. Let's do that over here. 37 into 185. Of course, if you have a calculator, you can do that very quickly. Um, that looks like maybe about 5 times. 5 times 7 is 35. We're carrying 3. 15 plus 3 is 18. So that went exactly 5. So my solution for z is 5. Now, remember, we can take that and come back to this equation. I have y plus 4 times z, if z is 5, 4 times 5 is a 20, equals 20. Subtracting 20 gives me y equals 0. Okay, now that I know both z and y, I can go back to one of the original equations to find x. Um, let's see, which one do you want to put it in? I think I'm going to put it in this third one. I have 3 times x. If y is 0, minus 3 times 0 is just a 0 there. And if z is 5, plus 2 times 5 would be a plus 10, equals 10. Subtracting 10, I have 3x is equal 0. And of course, if I divide 0 by 3, I get 0. So my x value is also 0 here. So x is 0, y is 0, and z is 5. And you can check really quick if these are both zeros, those terms would not even be there. And you can see that if z is 5, we do have a correct solution, don't we? This concludes the lesson on solving systems of equations that contain three variables and three equations. 
you can see that if we get more and more equations in a system, it becomes a little bit more difficult to work through and find our solutions. But if we stay organized, we can in fact do that. In fact, in college algebra, you will see some larger systems and you'll learn that not only can you do this elimination type method that we've done here, but there are other methods involving matrices or determinants that you'll learn about that can also help you solve these equations. The main thing is to stay organized and be thinking about as you progress through the problem what it is you're trying to accomplish. So you want to think about those steps that we mentioned at the beginning of this lesson. I would appreciate very much if you would rewind this tape before you turn it back into the math lab. Thank you.